a little Anthony, which is kind of, I always, I always said to him, he ain't little, right? We'll find out about how did that all happen, because he, he ain't little, Anthony. He's giant Anthony, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Anthony? A little Yeah, Anthony. well, oh, you, you beat me up there, Boosie. You beat me up. I know. Yeah. Anthony, uh, right, no, I, I, I can tell the story of that. It has nothing to do with my stature or, or how or tall I was. Oh. It actually began with Alan Freed. Well, let's get, tell um, us about that. that that's, let's start with that right now. I, you know, I want to hear it from you again. I love the story. Yeah, well, the tis, um, legend says that uh, when we did Tears of My Pillow, Tears of My Pillow, uh, the, one of the promoters at Gorn and N Records uh, had taken the record to the Allen Free W to WINS for his show at that time. And, um, and you know, in those days, you you know, you came from that genre and that the jockey was king. You know, they picked them, what they wanted to hear, what they liked, they liked, and they kind of tried to make sure that, that, that what they liked was something that the public would like. So they had that, that kind of freedom to do that. And he was the, uh, uh, he was picking out, rec- uh, he picked out a few records and if he didn't like it, he put it put it on the side. And then they gave him tears in my pillow. And uh, he said, "Whoa!" He said, "Boy, that girl sure can sing." <laughs> and the record promoter, the record promoter said, "Oh, oh that's not a girl. Oh, that's a guy." And he said, "It's a guy? Well, oh, he must be awfully little." <laughs> and he started saying it on the radio, assuming he found out my name, which I've actually met him years before. He, he put two and two together, and um, and he just started saying "Little Anthony," and that's how Little Anthony was cut out of the herd as oh. far as the Imperial is concerned. Like a lot of people say, hey, man, what does it feel like I'm going to sing with the Imperials all these years? I said, no, I didn't sing with the Imperials. I sang with them. I, mm. I wasn't in the Imperials anymore. Once they cut you uh, cut you out of the herd, you become sort of a, um, a front man, front lady, front lady's front lady, a front man, you know? <laughs> so that's how that came about. But I'm actually... Because, again, I'm getting much older now. I'm, they say when you get older, you get shorter, right? Except you, Bruce. <laughs> you, 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 you well, you I don't know about you. Minute. Wait, Anthony. I, I know. Let's see. I used to be six two and a half. I'm now six eight, and I know you were about seven two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's a whole new thing with you, man. Uh, but um, I was five, uh, eight, five and a half. Was it eight, eight? eight uh, no, no. What am I talking about? Five, eight and a half. <laughs> I got you mixed up. Six, okay. Yeah, yeah. Five, eight and a half. That, but they tell you, you know, you're losing uh, half an inch or something when you get older. I don't know. Right, that's uh, but anyway, I, I always remember, excuse me, meeting you, I guess, at Palisades Park for the first time. And we go back yeah. a few years. And so, I, you know, I'm going to meet little Anthony. I'm playing the records on, uh, I guess it was WINS or maybe WABC at that time. And I figured I'm going to meet some little guy, right? And because uh, I knew, yeah. obviously. <laughs> but, yeah, you came on stage. I said, wait a minute, this guy's not little. But then I realized, you know, <laughs> now, everybody has to know Alan Freed, really, for those of you listening in Tokyo or the Philippines or, or somewhere out, out west somewhere with, you're not familiar, maybe you're not familiar with the name Alan Freed. I mean, he, I guess you can say he was like uh, the godfather, uh, radio personality, DJ of rock and roll. He brought, he really brought it in. You know, Anthony, there are, a lot of people think that he coined the phrase rock and roll. That is not true, mm-hmm. as you know. No, no, mm-hmm. no. Now, rock and roll is a, uh, an old expression uh, from black culture, and it means really yeah. the uh, the sex act. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I think it was the big Joe Turner was the one that really started going. Yeah. With, the, with some of the records that he he sang, but for some, but you know his show was you known as I remember it was known what House Party. First it was Moon Dog, but he got sued by some guy that thinks he was a real Moon Dog. Yep. Yeah, you, you know the story? I mean that's that's a great story. I keep interrupting you, but yeah, yeah Moon Dog. Was a guy that, when I was at WABC originally, we were on Avenue the Americas right across from, uh, what, the Hilton or something on 53rd Street. There was a guy that every day he dressed as a Viking. Listen to this. He wore rags, yeah. you know, right? Guy. And, and he, he wear a big a you know, hat, you know, with Viking horns on it and carried a spear. Yeah. And he was called Moondog. Yeah. And yeah. I was the real yeah. Moondog. And then listen to this. This is the funny, and then I'll be quiet because I want you to talk. About every day at 5.30, I used to look out the window at WABC and look down on the street, and Moondog was picked up by a limousine with a chauffeur. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's really honest to God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was not a. Knew where he came from. He was not a beggar. He was not a beggar. His name was yeah, Louis. His name yeah. was. His name was Lewis Harden, by the way. Well, I'll I remember be done. this so well. Anyway, let's talk I'll about you. Let's talk about you. Me. How? How old? 
How old? When did this start with with you, Anthony? When you know? When did oh all this gosh, get man, together? It, 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 and, and it, it started. I mean, my whole career. In fact, I did a whole thing with uh, was interviewed once, and in, I think in Europe. I can't remember the end. And we're interested in that. In the fact that I started when I actually as a professional, I. Started, I made my first record with a group called the DuPonts mm-hmm. um, that were all high school buddies. And we, we all went to boys high school. Brooklyn. And there was, uh, and, and um, uh, it was formed in the lunchroom where, you know, in those days, uh, they, they had after school programs for ch- kids to keep them from getting in trouble. It really worked. And then they had these lunches where you'd have two, three, four periods at one time in this huge hall having lunch, you know. And and that and, and the teachers, I don't know, some it, at that time the singing groups were becoming the thing, a lot like the rapping groups, the urban type sound thing going. It was street corner music. It was it was like it was just it was just raw. We we were like we really didn't know what we were doing, but we knew how to harmonize. And we knew that what we were doing was turning on our peers, our kids, our age, you know. And and so the teachers loved it when we would sing in, in lunchtime in, in, in high school. And uh, I tell people a lot of times uh, we had a lot of interesting people in the group off and on or wanted to be in the group on. One was Tommy Davis of the of the uh, Los, Los Angeles Dodgers, and he came oh. up with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Oh. He used to sing. Uh, Richie Havens. Um, I mean, any given time, we would all come together and just sing whatever the latest songs were out there. You know, one of the one of the songs that we loved singing was by the by the Cadillacs called Gloria. Speedo was a lead singer. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we used to sing that song in the subways. We sang it everywhere. But really, all that began really in, in that particular era. Now, we did meet a guy by the name of Paul Winley, who owned a, his own record company called Winley Records. And he said, well, you guys like to record? Well, yeah, we like to be heard on the radio. Well, we, we didn't do much. We, we did a song called You, and we did a song called Prove It Tonight. But they never did anything. They were more, more tri-state, uh, really successful tri-state-wise, uh, the tri-state hits. But they weren't national hits, or for that matter, international hits. Didn't get that far. But um, that was the beginning of uh, somebody actually uh, giving you money to sing because I would have given you money to let me sing. I mean, we used to we used to go down in the subways, man, because of the echo was so good down there. And we really, really actually, I think the groups of that era really started these subway uh, uh, singers that you have today. Now, they, they've learned their lesson from watching us. We didn't have a little basket where you could put money in. We knew that people would throw money in the basket, but what we were doing, we were did it but it evolved to the point where to this day you have people that down that subway and some very talented people where they actually make a living at that you know we used to i don't know the subways are so bad these days but um that's how it started and that was around oh 55 i was in boys high school i was in the annex and uh, yeah then i went then i went to the main building in boys high and that's where it began going and then winley heard about us and he recorded us, and that was the first time we had to join the union. We had to do all that stuff that we, we were kids. We didn't even understand all that stuff, but we did what we were told at that time, you know. And and, and it was an in- interesting time. I talked to Terry Johnson uh, quite a bit of the Flamingos, and we talked about the difference of how different groups sound and how what, why why did the groups out of Detroit sound differently from the groups that were in Cleveland and for that matter in New York City. Actually, New York City sound was very unique. But there also is another sound, also, Brucey. And as you know, it was coming out of Jersey. We call them the Jersey guys or Jersey singers. That's where the Bruce Springsteen's come in and, and the Dupree's and all those kind of groups came out of Jersey. Then you had groups that were coming out of Staten Island. And you had, of course, Dion in the Bronx. So everybody had their unique style. But there was no name for it. We got, because rock and roll became the, 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 the word that you said about the music to, to explain it. Uh, we just we just got caught up in the tide, and everybody was called rock and roll, you know, and and um, rock and roll singers. Oh. But really, in our eyes, we were R and B contemporary singers. We really were R and B. Like you, you, I remember the, I'm going a long way back, man. There's groups like the 
the, the, the crows and the, and the heartbeats and the harp tones and on and on and on and on and on. And the Diablos out of Chicago, Diablos out of Chicago, um, the Dells out of Chicago, um, and on and on. So all these groups developed their own particular style from where they lived and where they were. Actually, I'm out to put a plug in. I do this on, on the, uh, I don't, I don't think that it's ABC competitors because they're a cable. You guys are like a network, you know. But um, I do a show. Oh, heck with it. Serious radio. I do a show. Yeah. Well, listen, every, Sir, every, you know, serious radio, I spent. I spent quite a few well, years, you and I double were digits. All talking and, yeah, that's yeah, all right. We did a lot of talking, a lot of interviews there. You, yes, we did. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, I, and that was a very great time of my life. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I am thrilled to be home, but I know of your show uh, on Sirius. And by the way, we got many comments on Facebook, and people talk to me who listen to your show. And you know, they, one thing comes, a common denominator, Anthony, you are a great storyteller. You really do. <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, That's what they tell me. You are. Um, no, you are. And you know, yeah. it comes out in your music. That's why, remember you and I talked about that. Not only is it music, yeah, R&B, no, rock and roll, but there's yeah. drama. You are an actor. An actor. Well, yes, before, be, before I was called a little Anthony, in, in ancient times, uh, I was a, I was a, I was an actor. I actually studied in Star Time Studios as a kid, and my mother was like a stage mom. I did many plays. I did um, local plays. I was trained as an actor. Now most people don't know that. Um, and the, the music I, I kind of say was my second second love. Because I loved to, to act. And I did many, many things. I did movies. People didn't even know I was in it because I was in character. So what I did, probably, I married the two of them conveniently together. And it was easy for me, especially when I started collaborating with Teddy Randazzo and Don Costa. Uh, I was able to take Teddy's stories that he told me and injected myself into it. And so when I would sing a song like Hurt So Bad, I, I used the theory that Sinatra did of, of emphasizing the syllables. Or as the great George Goldner told me, you know, or, or, or how do, how do you who, who do you love singing? Uh, what's your, one of your favorite singers? And I said, well, Nat King Cole was one of them. And he says, you know how he enunciates his, his words? And each syllable is very important. He said, I want you to do that. So actually, Little Anthony was 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 created be, uh, from that uh, part of acting and then being in high school and all these different things that, that were put into my life that I started uh, using all of those things and, and, and actually developing them sound. I didn't know I was doing it, but that's what was happening. Well, that's what happens with a lot of people. You, you're developing this eclectic, this whole, this cultural feeling of where you come from like you said that's very important where you come from it melds into what you're doing and here you are with 50 yeah. 60 70 and you had a and look I know you had a, a love for the 30s and 40s because I can hear it I know, I know you grabbed up grab that stuff sure sure yeah my important. dad well, see my dad was a my, my dad I had a musical family. Everybody in my family were musicians. Uh, my brothers, Donald was one of the best. Uh, he's a he self-taught composer, and he, he had a heck of a voice. And my brother Elliot and my brother Sonny. But my brother Elliot played drums, and my brother Sonny played sax. And my mother was a gospel singer, with the Nazareth Baptist gospel singer. It was well known. Mm. Like I knew Sam Cooke when he wasn't Sam Cooke, <laughs> you know, when he was with the Soul Stirrers. Right. And he used to stay I'd come to my aunt's house, my aunt Sarah, and he would always say, "Miss Ford, how you doing, Miss Ford?" And he was, and that's when I first met him. And so I, I'm really, I'm really blessed in that way. Music has always been a part of me as, as long as I can remember. And then my mother told me and my father that her great great grandfather was considered one of the great gospel singers in, in the South, in Savannah, Georgia, and all around the South. And I didn't know that. So genetically, it, it, it just seemed like everybody was a musician. My dad played with some of the big bands at that time. He played with Buddy Johnson. He played with uh, with. And, Eddie Johnson, he played with Sinclair's or I mean, everybody. In fact, I was a kid. He dragged me one day to the Savoy. I don't know how old I was. I had to be eight, nine. And he dragged me to the Savoy, and I actually introduced me to Duke Ellington. That's when I met Duke Ellington. And over the years, knew him. And and, and so when you have that kind of interjection of, 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 of music in that genre, of every kind of music, you really do 
you, it, it, rub off, it should rub off on you. It sure doggone rubbed off on me. Boy, it, it I, sure I did. Be, <laughs> and I would be, be, be remiss if I didn't mention Mrs. Mannix. Ethel Mannix was my musical teacher in elementary school, PS67 in Brooklyn, in Fort Green Projects. She was the one that introduced me to the classics. Now, you folks out there don't know that. I'm a big opera fan. Yeah. <laughs> been, has been, I've been talking to a friend of mine who has a place in DeLuca in Italy. He's been trying to get me to come over there and, and, and go with him a short train ride to the Scala because I'm a great fan of Buccini <laughs> and, and, and Verity. Now, a lot of people say, well, how could that be? You just, you just, you. No, no, I, I'm an enigma, I guess. I, there's, a, there's a lot of parts to me. I confuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I can just hear you doing La Boheme or La Scala. Oh, yeah, oh, I mean, I can uh, just hear yeah. it. It's possible. Now, let me ask you this. Where, I mean, you are... As I said, we can, we can spend hours and hours. You and I have never, ever worked, you know, sort of, uh, run out of words. Where, where are we going to see you? Well, what's happening, uh, you know, in the, well, in the right near future? Now, I'm, 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 um, I'm, I'm actually recording. I'm doing a Christmas album. You know what? Go huh. No, we tell me about we it. We never did. We never did a Christmas album. Not like twelve, you know, eleven songs or twelve songs. We never did. We were one of those people that never did the Christmas album. Why I don't know. We're in good company. Michael Jackson didn't do it. But there's very, very, very many performers that did not do it, as, oh. as well as many performers who did do it. You know what I mean? So Sirius Radio said, we have no catalog on you. You know, when you do your show around Christmas time, they found maybe like the three Christmas songs I did. Two was three I did. Oh, my gosh, in the 90s, early 90s, mid-90s, uh, with um, H.B. Barnum in, in L.A. And we just did it on a comp uh, what they call a complimation album. Mm -hmm. The Platter, there was some bunch of people was on it. But we did, we never had a complete uh, Christmas album. So they kind of hinted to me, boy, that'd be nice if we had that in our catalog. You know, we can, we can, we can pull on that when the Christmas time comes. And so I just thought to myself, well, wait a minute, you know, with the technology today, you can you can record an album in your bathroom. I mean, AI is like unbelievable. <laughs> and and um, I got with a man here in uh, Florida, we call him affectionately Mongo, his name is uh, Mark uh, Friedman, one of the finest pianists out here, and I was blessed to have known him. And there's just Charlie Colello out here, obviously with the Four Seasons, one of the great arrangers. A lot of good people down here in Florida. And I ended up telling him about it. He said, well, why don't you go to my house? I got a studio. So I'm actually at this time, today, I just came from there like five hours in his studio doing, the, we're on our fifth song. I'm not going to tell you what they are, like the surprises. Um, okay. We, 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 are we we, gonna, we Anthony, are, are we going to uh, recognize some of the Christmas songs, or is that original stuff? No, you know, I had a, somebody called me the other day and said, who was it? Oh, Johnny, 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 Johnny Bitt told me, why don't you write one for yourself? I said, no, I think I'm going to stay to the traditional songs that I enjoy, that I like. And, and the thing Sinatra once said, if you do songs that other people became famous by, you better do it comparable or better. Because if you can't do it comparable or better, don't do it. You know what I mean? So I really thought about what, what would happen if I, what would I do with a song like Little Drummer Boy, you know? Or Winter Wonderland or whatever. I'm just picking songs out of my head, out of the air. But mm -hmm. that's how this is being con uh, uh, developed. I actually will listen to as many Christmas songs I can. And, and then I try to make, I'll hear the song. And if it, if it, if it, it's compatible with me when my, my ear hears it. And I say, you know, I can do that song well. I can do that even if somebody had big hit, hit on it. In your, in your style, huh? In your style. Yeah. So, Anthony, yeah, and Anthony, when, yeah. when, let me, let me ask you this. You, you're, you're wonderful to talk to. You're so easy. Uh, Anthony, when, when, uh, when are we going to hear this album? When am I going to get a, a copy well, of well, it? This is, well, this is really being done for next year uh, because we're too late now. You know, this is right. too late. So, so we have something to look forward to next year's yeah, present. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is a project of, of uh, this is a labor of love. It's like um, I didn't I did a I, I did do Silent Night and I will be doing a lot of uh, uh, Christian type and secular type Christmas songs that people are aware of. We even did one. I'm not going to tell you the name of it, but <laughs> we we did it almost uh, in a jazz style. Like a lot of people are going to be hearing me singing in another kind of a way. Mm -hmm. That they had no idea that I had the ability to do that. That's the freedom mm -hmm. of, you know, being, being in, in, in my age in this business. If we paid our dues, so I'm really not held to anything. 
I can just do it if I want to. That's and right. Yeah, well, that's that's jumped on board. You know, I'll tell you something that that that's so wonderful about your career. All right. So listen. Are you, by the way, are you doing the uh, you know the uh, the summer tour again? You're going to be on that. Everyone yeah, loves that. Yeah. You know, Brucey, I talked to you. I think I talked to you about that. That last, the one I did in '23 was tough because I wasn't feeling very well. You know. And it was really tough. We did 61 dates out everywhere in the United States of these Americans. You know what I mean? And it was, I, I kind of thought I was this, um, you know, I'm the kind of guy that has this young guy inside me. He's 32 years old. And I, I don't tell him that he's not 32 because if I do, it'll upset him. You know what I mean? No, you're not 32. He's going to leave. I and so know. I thought I can do this tour. But when I got on that tour, about three weeks into it, I said, "What did I get myself into?" You know. <laughs> you know, it Anthony. Was rough. I hear that. Yeah. I hear this exact thing. This moment we're talking about from just about everybody. Listen, we uh, we can, we're going to continue with another part of this. Obviously, there's so much more I got to ask you. I, uh, Ava, uh, one of our wonderful executives, has uh, yep. uh, prepared a, a medley of some of your great recordings. And uh, mm -hmm. we're going to end this. Would you introduce that medley? And uh, thank you, Anthony, thank you so much. I can't wait to have you back at PNC. You are absolutely delightful, and you are a real Renaissance man. That's uh, what, With capital well, R's nice bold. Thing, and I, mean, yeah. I could say the same about you, lads, and tell the folks out there that you are the last of the great disc jockeys that came up. You are in the A class of the cats that came up. And I say that loose, not loosely, but but from my heart, of course, I knew them all, you know, from Jocko's to, to Alan Freed's to to um, uh, who I miss. I know I'm missing a bunch of people. Uh, Tommy Smalls and Doctor Jive. Um, um, you know, uh, um, my, uh, uh, sometimes my mind goes into neutral. Um, <laughs> Jerry, oh, Jerry Blavitt, um, mm -hmm. on and on and on. And you're right there. And if there's a Mount Rushmore somewhere, and well, boy, that was great. <laughs> Good company. I'd be awfully mad if they didn't put your face up there, ma'am. You are well, a delight. Let me tell you something. As long as you're there beside me, I'm happy. Introduce your medley. I love you, Anthony. I love you. You're wonderful. Could you introduce this medley? And thank you so much. You are a delight. What songs are they? I can just... just, just oh, it's out. Let's see. Uh, well, there's one, one that you head, you so get bad, crazy about. Me? It hurts so bad. The two kinds of people. Which was my favorite song, by the way, of all the songs we did together with Don Costa and Teddy. I thought it was Coco, um, Shimmy Shimmy Coco Bob. But well, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Come on. I know. You know I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just teasing you. All right. Would you introduce this medley? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, uh, this is a real pleasure. Um, yeah, I did it. I confess, I, I did it. I did these songs and songs like "Shimmy Shimmy Coco Bop." <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, to Anthony. Shimmy, shimmy, bop, sitting in a native hut all alone in blue. A sitting in a native hut wondering what to do. Along came a native girl, did a native dance. It was like in paradise, put me in a trance. Going shimmy, shimmy, go, go, bop, shimmy, shimmy, bop, shimmy, shimmy, go, go, bop, shimmy, shimmy, bop. More than just friends For a time Falling in love with you For a time Falling in love with you If you can
boy meets girl and love begins. Oh, what a feeling you get from within. For I should know, cause I'm in love. I'm the boy who told the girl of the stars up above. Take me back, I'm begging, please. Take me back, I'm on my knees. For you to scold me, hurt me. Take me back when you belong to me. I have a jealous mind. Too late, I learned that you were not the cheating kind. Take me back, I'm begging, please. Take me back, I'm on my knees. For you to scold me, hurt me, hold me, darling, take me back. I'm on the outside looking in. On the inside with you, you are with somebody new, and I don't know what to do, cause I'm still in love with you. In love with you. I'm on the outside looking in. Left on the outside, all alone. Oh, 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 I love this line. I got you. I love that song. Boy, that uh, early in my career with that. Wasn't he delightful? Isn't he delightful? Really amazing. It just made I can listen to him talk, right? I, I talk to him and then I just let him go. He is uh, interesting, natural, and so bright. Oh, is he bright? Okay, my cousin.